everybody welcome back to Mount Mograph as always my name's Matt in today's video we have summit 61 uh, 2d 3d objects uh, I think I'm gonna call this in Adobe After Effects using Cinema 4d Lite, which ships with Adobe After Effects Creative Cloud super super easy to do and it's a really fun tutorial or lesson that I think you can hopefully incorporate uh, some of the techniques and whatnot into your own projects and get some cool looking stuff um, so this is starting to get pretty popular. It's like this whole flat looking 3D, 2D object. Um, and as you can see here, we have a little example, pretty fantastic. Um, and then here's another one I actually made it a little while ago. Um, really, literally the same thing, just different colors and some different stuff. So we're gonna go ahead and just see the whole process of it. There's some cool little tips along the way on how to set this up, but it can totally turn out pretty cool. Um, and it's pretty easy to change and, and do extra stuff with so anyway let's go ahead and just jump right into it uh, I'm gonna go and create a new project here uh, and we're gonna go with the classic size composition 1920 by 1080 looks like I will be doing eight seconds long uh, so right off the bat here let's just right click in our project manager and go down to new max on cinema 4d file save this to your desktop as whatever you want I'm gonna call it computer fantastic uh, so I always know where to find it and mine's gonna open up in cinema 4d light r16 which ships with Adobe Creative Cloud uh, you can also use like studio or anything else if you have a real version of cinema 40 uh, but it's surprisingly robust for what it is so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just start by creating the computer monitor by clicking the cube up here and uh, just grabbing these little orange sliders here into something relatively monitor sized uh, and I'm actually gonna do uh, that 1920 uh, by I'll do 1280 actually and this is just to get uh, a relatively good size uh, and then I'll scale it down a little bit it really doesn't matter uh, too much what everything is looking like and then I'm gonna go and just turn the Z size up a little bit add a little fillet or fillet whatever the heck you wanna pronounce that word as on the edges here and maybe turn the radius down to four and the, the divisions I'll turn up to six and wow look at that we have a wonderful start of a computer monitor so that is the first step let's go ahead and uh, name this I'm just gonna call this computer to monitor um, base I guess seems pretty appropriate and then uh, the next up is grab your primitives and grab a cylinder. We're going to rotate this cylinder a wonderful 90 degrees. Uh, so it's just like this, which looks great. And just move it down with the move tool, um, pressing E on your keyboard. Uh, and then you want to position this um, and then scale it down with T or the scale tool just like this. And position it roughly where like a power button or the um apple like imac symbol is i'm going to kind of use the imac that's sitting in front of me as a reference uh so then just move it back so it's sitting relatively flush with the monitor just like this and we are well on our way to creating this fantastic animation so i'm going to go and name this cylinder um into like power button i guess i'm going to hold command and duplicate the power button and i'm going to call this one uh back power symbol starting to get creative with the names this is not a good sign so if I go in the back here and just scale this up a touch and also try to make this relatively flush with the object maybe scaling up the uh, radius or the diameter I guess a little bit on the outside um, that's looking pretty good and uh, well we're honestly almost done with the uh, build <laughs> it's pretty straightforward so let's actually go ahead and uh, duplicate the computer monitor base uh, holding command again and I'm gonna call this the um, monitor screen I suppose uh, and what we're gonna do with this one is once again set our X and Y properties to 1920 by 1080 and then just scale this down appropriately um, just so we have a nice normal sized composition for the stuff we're gonna be putting in this monitor so I'm gonna just try to make this as flush as I can I'm um, switching the view if I have to here um, F2 on your keyboard to go into the top view uh, so we have a nice almost TV looking screen uh, deal going on here and then let's jump into our side view pressing F3 on the keyboard or this little guy up here and go into your filter and turn on the grid and then we'll turn on snapping this little magnet icon over here turn on enable snap and also work plane snap and grid point snap and then we're going to go and grab the bezier spline tool and uh, just click um, 
I don't know, a couple times. We're going to try to make something that looks like a base. I just made the worst shape. Um, looks like a base to this monitor. Uh, so maybe something like that. Pretty squiggly and cool. And uh, we just turned on this enable snap so it actually snaps the grid when you move these uh, grid points just like this. Uh, pretty cool. Um, nice way to keep your stuff nice and geometric or relatively geometric anyway. Even. Let's go with even. It's not really geometric. So anyway, go back into your side view and we have this awesome little base for our monitor sitting there. And we'll go into our spine tool and grab the rectangle spine and we'll turn the size down quite a bit because 400 by 400 is massive. So let's go with uh, 3 by 20. And it's actually sitting like right inside of our monitor. I'll pull it out here. And it's this little white guy uh, sitting right in there. So let's turn off the grid because it's getting in the way again. So I'll turn off the grid with that. Um, and then all we're going to do is go up into our sweep, I believe. This little guy right here. Drop our spline in first and drop our rectangle in second. And check that out. We now have a wonderful sweep of those two shapes. And on the rectangle, let's go and change our height um, so it's actually wider. And maybe turn our width up to 5. So we have that awesome looking base. Uh, we'll, we'll adjust it so it looks better. And then just turn on rounding. Uh, so we have these wonderful little uh, rounded edges, real Mac-like and Apple. Uh, Make Steve Jobs happy. So um, this is all looking pretty solid. Let's go ahead and add that little cutout in the back. So what I'm going to do is name this sweep into um, computer base. And then we'll go and grab the back power symbol. And just hold command and drag this out to duplicate it. Uh, move this backwards. Uh, rotate it a little bit. It uh, doesn't matter what you want to rotate it to. And then we'll kind of scale this up a little bit. Uh, you can grab these little orange symbols, which is helpful. And then we're just going to position this um, somewhere in like intersecting this little back part. And that looks fine to me. It doesn't really matter for right now. And then we're going to go in, grab a uh, bool tool bool tool. I can't even speak uh, right up here. And we're going to drop both our computer base in first and then minimize that and then drop our back power symbol one the one we just duplicated which i'm going to actually call cutout um, i'm going to drop that in second and then i should probably start um, making sure these are organized better so i'll drop the cutout in and put this below the computer base sorry if that's getting confusing here and we're actually going to get a nice little cut uh, just like this and then on the bool let's go and click create single object just so it's nice and easy and then hide new edges just in case um, so this is looking cool. We have that nice little cut. Uh, let's go ahead and name this just as base build. And then we're going to go into our deformers and grab the taper uh, deformer. And with this one, let's just go and position it so it's roughly around the um, base build that we just made. So actually, mine miraculously fits pretty well. And then all we're going to do is grab our base build and our taper, press Alt-G to group them, and we're going to call this base tapered uh, because that is very creative so we'll toggle down grab our taper and we're going to turn the strength up um, just a bit so it actually kind of squashes into this wonderful Mac shape um, like that so as you can see we go from zero um, all the way up to hero at 41 percent uh, so that looks pretty good. I even went up to 45%. So uh, like I said, this is cruising right along. We are just about to the cool stuff. So we have our computer build generally done. Let's go and jump into our side view. F3 on the keyboard or this little guy up here. And first we're going to hide our deformer. So double click this little traffic signal at the top, the top one, so it turns red. And then on your... Uh, all these other options right down here. Let's group those two. So grab them, press Alt G for a null. And I'm going to call this um, computer top, I guess. I can't really think right now. Uh, so we'll press L for the enable axis modification tool or this little guy right over here, the symbol. And then just move this down um, so it is, I don't know, kind of near the bottom portion of the monitor where it would normally bend. So that looks good for me. I'll press L and then uh, make sure that's unselected. And then just move this up so it's. Uh, I don't know, it looks normal. And then I'll just press R for rotation and tilt it back a little bit so uh, Jay-Z could use this computer with the lean back effect. Uh, worst joke of the day, for sure, by far. Um, so let's grab our back symbol and just try to make this a little bit more flush with everything. Uh, just honestly have it sticking out just the smallest little bit because we kind of want that flat um, look. So there we go. We kind of are starting to get a nice little um, computer monitor together. Let's go and add the colors, which is uh, part of what makes this um, animation really cool. So if you double click in your create uh, or your material manager, we are going to go and turn off our color and our reflectance 
and let's go ahead and turn on our luminance. So pick any color you want. I will go with um, bright neon green. It's a paint your own computer day. And then I'll hold command and drag that out. Holding command is like the universal copy in um, Cinema 4D. So for pretty much everything. So I'll grab this guy and I'm going to make this one into a snazzy purple. Uh, so something like that and let's do maybe one more color so I'll just hold command click in there and on this one let's actually uh, go to our luminance and on the texture go down to gradient and click this little icon here and go to type and switch it to 2dv for vertical um, toggle down this tiny little black arrow here and go to interpolation and set it to um, none and then we'll just drag this uh, this guy back here and what we're gonna do is create a nice little two-tone effect here so if you click this black uh, button let's go and pick some other colors so I'm gonna go with a uh, forest green and a very non matte color like um, red for Christmas so drop that linear gradient that we just made onto the computer top um, actually that was a lie drop it onto the computer monitor base and as you can see, we're getting a two-tone effect. So I'm going to grab this screen and actually just lift it up a little bit and kind of cheat um, on that. And then in the gradient, I'm just going to move the red down a little bit until it um, fits a little bit better with the design. So that's looking pretty cool. Let's go ahead and add some more colors to this and really get this, uh, this guy moving. So um, for these power buttons, let's go ahead and make these bright purple because that's something I've always wanted. So hold command on the material and just drag this to the power button got those awesome purple monitors uh, and then I will just make the base I suppose green so wow what a computer um, I'd buy about nine of those uh, and then for the screen let's go ahead and just create another material and turn off the reflectance and color and just keep this nice black and put this on the monitor screen so when I do command R you're gonna see we have this a uh, nice little effect coming together and it's looking cool so let's go and create um, a camera so we can get this animation rolling grab both these guys here and do alt G our classic null object and we're gonna call this computer complete uh, just like some awesome band name feel free to take that if you are in the mood for a band name um, and let's create a camera so just like that and then we're gonna click into our camera and let's go actually into our render settings right now and change our width and height of this to 1920 um, by 1080 so we're actually working with a composition size that we can use so I will go ahead and click into the camera here and go to the coordinates and just zero out the X and the Y and also the Z I suppose and then I guess every property just zero out everything and then we'll just pull back on the Z and in theory um, your computer should be in the dead middle of your screen so I'm happy with that position I'm gonna right click my uh, camera and go down to protection which is going to add a lock on this so we actually can't move the camera which is good um, for what the next step is gonna be so let's go ahead and make our timeline a little bit longer I'm gonna make it six seconds long and I'll just drag this little arrow out and then click my computer complete band name um, layer go to about 15 frames and click this little icon here for keyframe and go forward to let's call it three point um, three point seven three three seconds and I will press R for the keyboard or for the rotation tool and then just rotate this holding shift to 360 degrees so it's a full rotation and click another keyframe so now when I play this we're gonna have a nice uh, animation happening of this computer screen which is great so let's go ahead and jump to the stuff that can get a little confusing but it's totally cool uh, when you get it figured out so I'm gonna go and create a new null object and I'm gonna call this one actually content um, and this is very important so grab your content and put it as a child of your monitor screen and then in your content what you're gonna to wanna to do is zero out all the properties once again uh, except for the scale that'd be at one and that is great so now it's uh, if you have um any other version other than light of Cinema 4D you're going to be able to use a PSR um, reset or update which is much easier but for us we'll zero out those properties so right click your content go to Cinema 4D tags and go down to um, external compositing this option here we're gonna click solid and we're gonna make the size 1920 by you guessed it 1080 and that is all set to go and then for our monitor screen we're gonna right click that cinema 4d tags and actually click regular compositing and we're gonna go to an object buffer and turn on enable object buffer one that's fantastic so we are basically set up for this animation 
um, the magic really happens in the render settings. So in your render settings, you're going to want to go to this multi-pass option and first you're going to want to click on um, and then you're going to want to right click that and go down to object buffer and make sure it corresponds to object buffer group ID 1. And we are all set so I'm going to do command S on here to save that and then I'll go back into After Effects and I like to always press reload on this computer um, Cinema 4D thing I made. So I'm going to do reload footage just to make sure it's there and just drag it into my comp one. Um, so just like that, there our animation is. It's in a software renderer, so it doesn't, it's not like a final look right now. It's just kind of a preview. Um, but as you can see, if I click through here, we're actually going to have a pretty cool looking animation already. So let's jump into the magical stuff. Um, and what we're going to do is click uh, Cinema 4D Scene Data, um, just click Extract, and it's actually going to pull out our camera and our content um, null, which is going to be the important thing. So press S on your content, and you're going to see it has a ton of keyframes on the scale. Um, we actually don't need any of them, so click the stopwatch to remove all of them, and then just scale this down um, until it's the same size as that black um, like uh, spot we had there. So I'm going to right click or I'm going to grab the content here and do shift command C to pre-compose this layer and say uh, leave all attributes in comp one and I'm going to call this content of screen and uh, that should be good so let's go ahead and actually duplicate our computer fantastic cinema 4d thing command D on your keyboard drag it above your content of screen uh, and then this is where the cool thing is going to happen so if you click multi-pass linear workflow uh, you're going to first want to change your render to uh, standard final and then you're going to want to click cinema 4d multi-pass and set multi-pass you're going to go down to object buffer and click ok and it's going to turn black and white just like this of your content of screen change your track mat down to a luma mat and we now can see our wonderful red um, content so all you're going to have to do is name this project as something you, you want and then just click into your content of screen and from there you can delete your content and really put any kind of uh, animation you want in here. So I'm going to go and make a nice blue, um, I guess, object that's not the right size. And then maybe add some text of, did this work? Um, because I would really like to know. Uh, so let's go ahead and use that. Um, and let's see if this works. So if I go back into comp one, we now see our computer monitor screen has the text that we just added um, rotating on this 3D object, which is super, super cool. So uh, just like that, you're able to take this nice um, flat 2D, 3D object and put it into After Effects. And uh, when you render this out, it's going to look awesome. So that was today's uh, Summit, Summit 61. If you liked it, leave a comment, drop a like, anything at all. Uh, thanks for checking out the channel. I hope you had fun. Peace out. I'll talk to you soon.